Today's topic is pneumoconiosis. Pneumoconiosis are a group of interstitial lung diseases caused by the exposure and inhalation of certain dust, particularly mineral dust, that are deposited in the lungs, causing damage. Pneumoconiosis is often called occupational lung disease because the dust particles that cause the condition are usually found in the workplace. When mineral dust is inhaled, dust particles can either land in the bronchial tubes or the airways or go all the way into the air sacs or alveoli that are situated deep in the lungs. The reaction of the lungs to the mineral dust depends on the characteristics like the size and shape of the particles. After the dust particles land and settle in the lung, the lung tissue tries to get rid of them or tries to surround them to keep them from doing damage. Inflammation develops as the body tries to fight them off. If the inflammation is severe enough, it can cause scar tissue to form, known as fibrosis. If a larger area of the lung is affected, or inflammation and fibrosis are severe, they may cause symptoms of pneumoconiosis. Causes There are many mineral dusts that can cause the condition. Depending on the type of dust, the disease is given different names. Asbestosis is caused by asbestos fibers. Aluminiosis is caused by aluminum. Coal workers' pneumoconiosis is caused by coal carbon. The disease is also called miner's lung, black lung, or anthracosis. Silicosis is caused by crystalline silica dust. The disease is also called potter's rot or grinder's disease, or when related to silica inhaled from the ash of erupting volcano, it is called pneumo-ultramicroscopic silico-volcanoconiosis. Boxtrite fibrosis is caused by bauxite. Siderosis is caused by iron. Beryliosis is caused by beryllium. Bisonosis is caused by cotton fibers. Silicosiderosis is caused by mixed dust containing silicon and iron. Stanosis is caused by tin oxide. Pneumoconiosis resulted in 260,000 deaths globally in 2013. Of these deaths, 46,000 were due to silicosis, 25,000 due to coal workers' pneumoconiosis, and 24,000 due to asbestosis. Risk factors for the condition includes a range of jobs that may bring workers into contact with dust particles, such as plumbing, roofing and building, coal mining, textile workers. The risk is often higher when people have been exposed to mineral dust for a long period of time or in high concentrations. Another risk factor is inadequate or inconsistent use of personal protective equipment such as respirators. Symptoms. No symptom may exist early in the disease because dust can build up slowly or take many years to cause a reaction in the lungs. Key symptoms are shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, tightness in the chest, a cough with or without mucus. Oxygen may be prevented from easily reaching the blood during breathing if the condition involves a larger area or causes severe scarring. This results in hypoxemia, low blood oxygen levels. High level of fatigue when performing normal activities. Diagnosis and treatment. The condition may be diagnosed by routine workplace surveillance in exposed workers, or it may be diagnosed because a person previously exposed to mineral dust develops symptoms. If symptoms develop, the doctor will complete a physical examination and ask about medical history including details about symptoms and exposure. Imaging tests such as CT scan or chest x-ray can reveal inflammation or scarring in the lungs. A pulmonary function test to check the level of oxygen reaching the blood from the lungs and show how well you are able to fill and empty your lungs may also be conducted. Sometimes a biopsy test may be recommended to rule out other diseases. Treatment. No cure exists for this condition and also there are no specific treatments or medications. Treatment options aim at limiting further damage to the lungs, decreasing symptoms and improving the overall quality of life. Treatment options may include oxygen is prescribed if there is hypoxemia. A lung transplant may also be recommended. Smoking cessation for heavy smokers. Counseling. Exercising regularly. Maintaining a healthy weight. Getting plenty of sleep. Using an inhaler regular checkups to help manage disease and spot any progression. Thank you for watching our video. Please do not forget to like and share the video. 
Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated on our latest videos.